gentlemen, we just did that. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so, so much. I am deeply honored and humbled by your support and the faith that you have placed in me. This election is, of course, a momentous one, as we already know. Yeah. And I am truly grateful for the opportunity to lead our great city. Thank you. Yeah. I first want to start off by thanking Mr. Dale Anderson uh, for stepping up, for running, and for contributing to our great democracy. So thank you, Mr. Dale. I want to take a moment and express my greatest gratitude to my campaign manager, to my team, Cole. I couldn't have asked for a better campaign manager. <laughs> to Anissa and Bahja and Kosar, who are just running around handling everything. Thank you so much. Thank you for door knocking. Thank you for doing it after work and after school and all your other obligation. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you to Isabel. I think I saw her somewhere over here. But man, she door knocked over a thousand doors like a machine. To Griffin and to Jaden, who I saw as well, who are high school students who came and door knocked. That's amazing. It's, you know, it's truly amazing to see young folks being active in, in politics and taking their, their civic duty serious. It's amazing. It's amazing to have that in my, on my team. And I also want to thank Ian, who's also all the way over there, the British dude all the way in the corner over there. <laughs> he biked even when it was cold outside to go door knock. And that's dedication. So thank you. I also want to thank, to, I want to thank all my supporters and my donors, um, and all the people who endorsed this campaign. You know, I, I cannot stand here, because y'all already been waiting all night, right? But I can't stand here and name every single one of them, because we'd be here until next week, and y'all want to get home. It's, it's school night, right? But I want to highlight a couple of folks. I don't know if I, um, if I saw them on my way here, but I want to highlight our council member, uh, Lynette Dumalog, who is a ward member too. She's been a huge, 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 um, a friend, a good friend to me, and a huge supporter. Also, want to thank our, both of our house representative, Larry Kraft. I think I saw him too. Yeah, Larry. Yes, and our other house representative, Cheryl Yoakim. There you go. Thank you. Also, want to thank Council Member uh, uh, Tim Brosson, um, whose ward that we're in. I haven't seen him, but I want to thank him as well. Okay, there we go. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. I also want to recognize and thank and give my big shout out to our Lieutenant Governor Peggy Flanagan, who, who lives in this neighborhood. Hi! Who lives in this neighborhood. Um, not in this neighborhood, but in the city. I also see our Senator, Senator Ron Latz. Um, thank you so much. And our school board members, all the people who ran, though, the, uh, um, I haven't seen, I haven't gotten a chance to look at their election, but I wish them best of luck. Oh, it's all good, it's all good, it's all good. All right, I'm getting that news as I'm speaking to you. And I want to thank them for running, and I want to thank them for their support. It was amazing to do it in collaboration with them. I want to thank Yolanda Ferris. I think I, there she goes, our newly elected, elected council member. Um, so amazing to, ha to see that. So I also want to highlight Mayor Jake Spano. I think I saw him somewhere in here. There you go. I want to give y'all, ladies and gentlemen, just look over there. That is our current mayor, Mayor Jake Spano. I want to thank him for his 12 years of dedication to this job, well, to both as mayor and as a council member, for the amazing work that he's done here in the city. I want to thank him for his mentorship and his guidance. Um, and thank you for passing the baton when it was time. Yeah. So thank you. Speaking of mentors, I want to acknowledge the man who started all of this, who put this idea in my head, Tom Miller, who I consider my day one supporter. Um, I can't thank you enough for that random Facebook message from 2019. And I want to thank you for your continued support since. So thank you. Right? I also want to thank my friends, my aunties. I see them all around. 
I see my family who were donors and door knockers and hype men and everything in between because you need that to survive a campaign. So thank you. I see them in the back hiding per usual. I see them all over. So thank you so much. I am appreciating it. I want to thank my family, my younger sister, who, you know, I'm the eldest daughter of an immigrant family. And so that is a job of its own, right? As we know, that's a job of its own. And so when I have to step away from my family, my sister steps in. And I love that. Thank you. I want to thank everyone here in this room. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for voting today. And if you voted early, thank you for voting early. As you can see with, from all my thank yous, this isn't a one-man show or in this case, a one-woman show. <laughs> I, I, you might be thinking, I forgot to thank somebody really important. I did not, I did not forget to thank my mother. Okay, I did not. Because, because, right? While I, while I don't have enough time to highlight every single one of you and the amazing support and the truly how, how monumental or impactful you have been in my journey, I do want to take the time to tell you about my mom. So, right, many of you here know about my story, but not a lot of you guys know my mother's story. My mom was the eldest daughter of four girls in, and born and raised in Somalia. In her teenage years, she lost her father to an airstrike. They called it a casualty of war. Recognizing now she is in charge of the wellness of her family, and due, the, to, due to the limitation of work opportunities in Somalia, my mother moved abroad to work as a domestic worker. Now, I don't need to tell you about the working conditions of domestic workers abroad. My mother realized that this isn't life. She went back to Somalia and then took refuge in Kenya. For the third time in her life, that was the second time that she moved, right, to Kenya. For the third time in my mother's life, she realized that isn't a life for this, the life that she was living in Kenya isn't a life for the family isn't a life for, her, for, for the, a future that she wanted for her kids and for herself. So she uprooted her life and moved to St. Louis Park. And I'm proud to say she hasn't moved since, <laughs> except for a brief stint in Hopkins, but we, we, don't, we don't acknowledge that, <laughs> right? Now she stands here in this room with you all, celebrating her daughter become the first black mayor, the first Somali mayor, the first Muslim, the first, Thank you. The first, oh, this is her, by the way. I didn't know she was right behind me. This is her. The first Muslim mayor and the youngest in St. Louis Park history. Yeah. Right? She gets to watch her daughter go and legislate at the same building she used to pay her public housing rent at. That's insane and that's amazing. Right? And so often I used to be her voice growing up in St. Louis Park. And so um, I remember I remember we would go to a doctor's uh, visit and she'd be like, Nadia, in Somali, right? She'd be like, Nadia, tell the doctor that you have a stomach ache, right? A stomach ache. And I would turn to the doctor and I would say, My mom said that I have a stomach ache. You need to check that, right? Um, and so I get to be her voice here once again and tell her story. And I tell this story for two reasons, right? Not to gather some sympathies or pity, because honestly, you can keep that and you know, take it to the next person. But I want, I want to highlight the story for two main reasons. From the first day I announced back in 2019 for my council seat, I was asked, where did I find this courage to run for office at such a young age? And to that, I now get to answer and say, is because I have watched a courageous woman handle her business every day and every single time. Yeah. So it is easy. So that courage, yes. So trust me, that courage comes easy to me now, right? And the second reason is because my mother's story is one part of the St. Louis Park story. It is the one part of the St. Louis Park story that I get to highlight every time I go into the council chambers. Right? But imagine what we can do when we censure those stories and those voices. Right? As, as mayor, I want to ensure that people see themselves reflected in our policies. When we implement programs such as our first generation home buyers program, people in St. Louis Park, our neighbors in St. Louis Park with different stories, see themselves reflected in that policy. 
when we advocate, and I'm gonna get dark here, y'all, all right? When we advocate for bomb sniffing canine units for our religious, for our places of worship, right? Our residents, our neighbors with different stories get to see themselves in that policy. Now, I look forward to centering, I look forward to continuing to center our neighbors and their voices with the collaboration of our esteemed council who are all over here. I look forward to working and continuing this with our professional experienced staff. I don't know if our city manager is here, but with the leadership of our city manager, Kim Keller. Now remember folks, this is a milestone. This is not the destination. Yep. Yeah. There, is, there is more to do and more to come. Thank you for putting your trust in me today and every day. It has been honor of a lifetime to serve you as your council member, and I can't wait to be your mayor. As you can, as you can tell, my dad was hearing me practice earlier, but he didn't have to steal my thunder. <laughs> I also want to recognize some of the elected officials that are in the room that I didn't get to acknowledge. I know that um, Senator Omar Fateh was here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's right here. I also want to acknowledge that Senator Zainab Mohammed is also here. Um, our House, uh, House Representative Hodan is also here. <clears throat> Hamoud Noor is also here, our other House Representative. I'm checking to see who else might be here. I didn't get a chance. Attorney General Keith was here as well, so I want to thank every single one of you. This isn't, like I said, this isn't a one-woman show. I am going to do it proudly with the help and support of our elected officials in and outside of St. Louis Park because we will get the judge done for SLP. All right, thank you.